Welcome back guys, this video is just going to be a discussion video about what I think went wrong with Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance, but I'm not going to be getting into the gameplay specifics. I already did that on my official game review, I'll put a link to that below. This is going to be more so talking about Took Games and Wizards of the Coast and what led up to this game's launch. If you end up enjoying this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button as this channel focuses heavily on fantasy medieval RPGs, especially ones that have a D&D focus. Links to my Twitter and my Discord server will be below. Let's get right into it. As many of you probably already know, Dark Alliance is not really doing so well in terms of reviews that are coming out for the game, whether this is on Steam, Google, YouTube reviews, article reviews, and the list goes on. The general consensus seems to be that the game is not good. Now, some reviewers are straight up calling it trash, and others seem to see potential if certain things are fixed. But either way, that's not really good. If we take a look at Steam, you can actually see that the reviews are mixed. 51% of people gave it a thumbs up. But when you look deeper and take a look at these thumbs up reviews, many of them actually start off saying things such as negative criticisms of this game are actually valid, or this game could be good if some things are fixed, and some people are just saying that the game is decent but just not worth $40. So even on many of the positive reviews, there's not many people just straight up praising the game. And then you have to remember that the other 49% are negative reviews, and that is a lot for a game. But before I get into Took and Wizards and the development of this game, I do want to quickly touch upon the negative hype train thing because it does exist whether you believe it or not. Now, I'm not saying that the negative criticisms for this game are not valid. In fact, I agree with a lot of it, maybe almost all of it. But the negative hype train thing is real. And once one YouTuber or some prominent reviewer does a negative review and they're kind of like a likable person and they're funny, so many people from that review are then going to write their own review without even experiencing the game themselves and not being educated on what they're talking about. And once again, I'm not saying that the negative criticisms are not valid, but the negative hype train does play a part when we're talking about the overall rough launch of Dark Alliance, even if it's just a small part in your mind. So why was a game released like this and why did it turn into what it's become? Well, let's start with the company behind the game and that's Took Games, a Canadian-based video game development company. So Took's first game was a game called Live Lock that they released in 2016 and it did surprisingly well according to most reviews. Live Lock is a top-down shooter game and it's been described as kind of like a Diablo with guns type of game. And it was published by Perfect World Entertainment. So first of all, Toot Games doesn't have experience overall as a company developing a third-person action game, but they did seem to do well with the top-down shooter. And the game after Live Lock is of course Dark Alliance, and Toot Games didn't even have a license to work on D&D content when they first started developing this game. They wanted to create something and then show it to Wizards of the Coast, and then have Wizards of the Coast grant them the license, and obviously they have to pay for that. When you make a D&D game, you get a ton of attention on your game, and if the devs are passionate about Dungeons & Dragons, whether through the tabletop game, or the books, or various other ways that you can consume D&D content, they get to create a game set in this iconic world. Well, eventually Toot Games did form a partnership with Wizards of the Coast after failing in many attempts. And from what I understand, this basically means that they formed some type of agreement to be able to use the license to create D&D content. And in this case, this is Dark Alliance, which takes place on the popular D&D continent, Faerun. And it also revolves around the iconic characters from the Legend of Drist book series, The Companions of the Hall. Well, believe it or not, after this partnership, Wizards of the Coast ended up just straight up acquiring two games in October of 2019. And this, of course, brings with it more devs to work on the game and a higher budget. So Took finally got what they wanted. Or did they? Now, like I said, Took has been given the go to create a D&D game. And what comes with a D&D game? a lot of passionate fans that expect a certain quality. On top of this, Took Games, and now I guess we can also say Wizards of the Coast at this point, are using the Companions of the Hall characters, and as someone who's read the books, these characters mean a lot to me. 
So right away when I first saw the first Dark Alliance trailer and I saw the beloved companions of the hall, I immediately noticed that the game didn't seem to be too high of a quality according to the first trailer. And trailers are usually the easiest thing to make, um, make a game look better than what it actually is. And when you see something like this where the cinematic trailer doesn't really look good to you, it makes you worry. At least it did for myself and I know many other people as well. And then the following trailer, although I am a huge metal fan, also went with non-immersive music, which is of course subjective, and the whole trailer overall just seemed to be done in more of a jokingly manner, with the enemies flipping people off and stuff like that. Now that in and of itself isn't a problem, and games done or even just advertised in this more comedic way, they can absolutely be great. But when you're dealing with the Companions of the Hall from Dungeons and Dragons, many fans are going to be disappointed that this world and these characters are not being taken a bit more seriously. So whether or not you care about that, um, Two Games was kind of walking on thin paper here for many players that come from a D&D background, whether that be the actual tabletop, the books, or even other D&D games. Now you can never please everyone, but D&D is a passionate topic, in a passionate world, in a passionate place. And with that, what's going to come? Passionate fans that are going to certainly chime in on a game that takes place in a world that they have so much involvement with. So two games going with the D&D license and being acquired by Wizards of the Coast, this brings a, a level of quality that many fans are going to expect and really want. And this obviously didn't necessarily turn out to be true. Also, it's important important to talk about the original Dark Alliance games. Dark Alliance 1 and 2 are regarded as some of the most influential D&D hack and slash games of all time. Now granted that D&D Dark Alliance isn't labeled as Dark Alliance 3, it's still Dark Alliance. It's very obvious that two games went with a completely different style and feel for this game compared to the ones in the past. Not just minor differences, pretty significant differences. And like before, this in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing, but now you have another passionate player base, or actually that player base is similar to the first one that we talked about, who love the originals and are hoping for a game to continue the legacy. But it's pretty clear that Toot Games wasn't focusing on that player base. Now they of course do not have to focus on that original player base and they don't have to focus on D&D players, but you're still bringing in that large crowd of people that are going to be looking at this game and are going to be disappointed. And this is why this is a factor in why this game is having such a rough launch aside from the actual gameplay specifics. Now of course guys, I'm not speaking for every D&D and Dark Alliance player, but I have talked to many people and I do have my own thoughts and feelings as well. Now on the subject of the old games, we come to find out that Tuke had originally planned and even started developing this Dark Alliance to be much more like the ones in the past, and we even got to see some hints of gameplay. But ultimately Tuke said that the game didn't feel right in that form, so they made a huge change and switched the game to be a third person hack and slash. Now this is a monumental change that probably erases a lot of the work that they had previously done, and they also lose just a lot of time on top of that. Generally speaking, a more isometric combat system is very, very different from a third-person action combat system, not only in just the combat technicalities, but also the world itself needs to be changed when going from one style to the other. A third-person perspective means that things have to be designed differently for them to look and function good from that viewpoint, and switching from isometric to third-person or whatever they were doing before, I don't know if it was exactly isometric, is a big change. It's a much more complex design style that typically requires more resources and more time to actually make it work well. This absolutely doesn't mean that third person games are better, just that many times they require more resources to be truly successful. So they made a massive change, and of course I don't know this for certain, but I'm assuming that this was kind of a setback, and then what we're going to talk about here in a little bit puts a limit on the time that they have to develop the game, and a huge setback with a time limit can obviously equate to a lower quality experience. So now we have Toot Games, a fairly small company, and I think they only had 12 developers at the start of Dark Alliance, who has no experience as a company in third person games. Doesn't mean they can't do a good third person game, this is just something that we're factoring in. Toot Games failed many times trying to get a D&D license, but ended up getting it. 
completely changed the direction of their game, and then also ended up being acquired by Wizards of the Coast. Now, when Wizards acquired them, they did up the budget and give Took more employees. But I'm also going to take a guess here that Wizards of the Coast also established a deadline that had to be met regardless of the state of the game. Now, I don't know much about Wizards of the Coast in this regards, but from listening to other people, it seems like they may be headed down a bit more of a corporate greedy type path rather than being a passionate D&D company. This, of course, is not a shot at anyone from Wizards of the Coast. I'm sure there's tons of very passionate employees that want to make great games. But when we get into these bigger, more corporate type companies, greed always comes into the picture. It's kind of like the older Blizzard compared to present day Blizzard with their cash shops in mobile games. Now, Dark Alliance is actually the first video game that Wizards published themselves because the other games that they had, they more so just gave out licenses for companies to use their D&D stuff. Now fast forward to present day and the game finally comes out and I'm going to fathom a guess here and say that Toot Games probably wanted more time to work on it but simply could not because they're now Wizards of the Coast's biatch. Wizards knows that if they release this game regardless of the state that it's in, it will make a ton of money. Not only does the D&D name bring a lot of eyes to a project, but also just the co-op nature of this game is going to make so many people excited for it regardless of whether or not it turns out good, we just simply don't have that many co-op experiences. And also this game is coming to Couch Co-op in the summer which has been advertised and this is going to bring in even more people regardless of if the game is good or not. Now, Wizards of the Coast also just has the money for the marketing to push this game into the eyes of gamers that I didn't even include in what we talked about before. Now, I do think that if Took and Wizards just simply fixed the AI, the balancing of the game, and of course the obvious technical issues and bugs and things of that nature, the reviews wouldn't have been nearly as bad. But they kind of launched it in a rough state, so it deserves a lot of the negative criticism. But even if they did address that stuff initially, many D&D fans, Legend of Driss fans, and just fans of the original Dark Alliance games are still not going to be happy about the game. So you combine the obvious issues that the game has, which is me agreeing with a lot of the negative criticism, while walking a very thin line by doing a very casual, not serious experience involving such a beloved world and such beloved characters. And this is kind of what probably turned this game's launch into what we see now. So a lot of negative criticisms I do think are valid. If you guys go watch my review, I tried to stay pretty fair. I did like some things about the game and other things I think need to be fixed before I could recommend people to buy it just make sure to watch my review if you want my personal opinions on the game but combine the problems that they have alongside just using this very very important DD world and this is what you get this is the type of launch that a company will experience so my main concern is i prefer a DD experience to be a more complex rpg i think if two games just went with didn't go with the D&D world and just did their own silly, you know, $20 hack and slash game, I think they would have done much better, even with the AI in the current state that it's in, and even with some of the bugs. If this was just a $20 um, brand new world that two, game made, two games made, I don't think as many people would be angry. In fact, people might support Took and hope for Took to make better games in the future, but instead they took this leap, they took on a D&D game, and released a game, in my opinion, that's, uh, that's a bit unfinished and this is what happens. So really nothing bad against, um, you know, the two game developers. I mean, there's probably tons of passionate, talented people at Wizards and at Took, but the whole process of this game's development, I think just kind of led to this kind of uh, rocky launch. All right, and I'm gonna leave it at that, guys. I'm kind of ranting now. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Those of you guys that are enjoying Dark Alliance, hey, enjoy away. Nobody can tell you that you don't like a game. If you enjoy it, you enjoy it. And those of you guys that hate it, hey, nobody can tell you that you don't hate it. And those of you guys that see potential in it, hopefully Toot Games brings a lot of updates in the future, and I'll be sure to try to cover them and see if changes are actually made.